In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a parallax effect with the WP Maker page builder. There's two different ways the plugin allows you to do it. They're both subtly different. I'm going to show you both of them. And this is part of the WP Maker page builder playlist. To check out that whole playlist, link in the description down below, possibly a card up above. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet and you like WordPress tutorials and tips and tricks, click the subscribe button, like click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like deals, check out the half off hosting deal I negotiated for you with InMotion Hosting. Nearly every plan is half off, some are less, but every plan has a discount that you could use for yourself or for your clients or whatever. Feel free to go check that out in the link down below or the card that popped up. And with that out of the way, let's head to this tutorial. To add a parallax effect to a row in WP Baker Page Builder, first we have to have a page we're editing. So if you have one, open that page or open a test page. I'm going to create a brand new page to add the parallax effect to by going to pages and then add new. I'm going to call this parallax testing. I'm going to click on save draft. Then I'll click on front end editor. And now we can start working on our row and the parallax effect. So I'm going to add a text box or text block and behind the text block is going to be where the parallax effect is happening. So it's going to add the text block. These are the settings over here. I'm just going to leave them as they are. And under the row or at the row options, here, click on this little arrow, click on the pencil to open the row options or the row settings, I mean. And now we can set the defaults. We want to stretch. We want to stretch the entire row to meet both sides. Well, at least I do in this case. But you can set that how you want. You can go through these settings all the way to the end. And then if you don't like how certain things look, go back and change those specific settings. So nothing, none of this is written in stone. The page is in draft mode, it's not even published yet. So play around with it and find out how all the features work. So if we scroll down a bit here, we have an option for parallax. There's a simple and with fade. I'm just gonna use simple. Then we add an image for the parallax effect. You can pick one from your meteor library or you can upload an image. I'm just gonna pick the image of these rocks in the ocean here and click set image. Now we have our image in here. We can set the parallax speed. This is one of those things where you don't really know what to set here unless you've done a lot of them, but you'll know when you see how it looks on the page. You'll know if you wanna slow it down or speed it up. So we're gonna put it on the page first before we mess with the speed. We have the option add CSS animation which is how the row will appear on the page. This animated button on the right will show what this option that you select will look like. So if we choose slide in down, if you watch this button, that's what slide in down looks like. Slide in left looks like this. Because we already have a parallax effect on the row, I don't wanna add another animation. It's, it's too much for me anyway. So I'm just gonna choose none for the animation. I can add a row ID if I want to. You can disable the row, which you'd use to test things, or maybe it's a special call to action for a sale that's not happening yet or is over. You can disable it to hide the row. It'll take it out of the public view, but then you can add it back in later by unchecking the yes. Add an extra class name to add more CSS styles if you want to. After setting all those things, I'm gonna click on save changes. That's gonna update on the left-hand side so we can see what we're working with here. So we have our full width row. As we see, it even goes over the sidebar. Unfortunately, our page isn't long enough, so we can't actually scroll. You need to be able to scroll down the page for parallax to work. So I'm gonna click this add element button right here. I'm just gonna add a bunch of tabs. I'm gonna add multiple rows, uh, just so we have some space to scroll. And then we'll hopefully have a nice little parallax effect going on. All right, now we have some some uh, some elements there we can actually scroll. We can see if we watch the clouds on the left hand side here, we can see as we scroll they sort of disappear. And that is the parallax effect. The background in the row is moving as we scroll down the page. To make this effect more pronounced, we have to make the row bigger. There's a couple ways we can do this. Click on the pencil by the row to open the row settings. We can add a height for the row, make it full height. Click on yes, click on save changes. And depending on what you have in your row, this might be the setting that you want. So this one looks pretty good. It's the full height of the image. It stretches the image as well. So if your image is taller than it is wide, this might not work out very well. 
But for this image that's wider than it is tall, it works out very well. And as we scroll, we can see we are parallaxing. It's a pretty cool little effect. That parallax might be a little too slow for you. So if you want it faster, we come back in here and we change the speed. The minimum value is one, default value is 1.5. We change the speed to five, for example. We should, when we scroll, the image should move a lot more once the page reloads. So here we have the image moving a lot more, but we had to zoom in because there wasn't enough image to actually make that happen. So the size of your image comes into play. If you want to have a faster parallax, you have to have a bigger image. So if we change this, let's change it to three. This might take our image down to a size where we can actually see some of it. So here we have much more of the image, much faster scrolling. As we can see, we scroll through more of the image because we set that to a higher parallax rating. And again, this is something you have to play with. You have to play with it to see what settings are right for you. Click on this pencil again to enter the row settings. And then I'm gonna uncheck full height and show you a different way to change the height of your row. And that is by going to a text block. If you have an element inside of the row, if you don't have an element inside the row, then you gotta stick with the full height. But if you do have an element in there, edit the element, go to the design options for the element and add padding. I'm gonna simplify box controls. So we have just one entry. I'm gonna add in 100 pixels. This is gonna add 100 pixels to all sides of the text block, including top and bottom. As we see, now we have more of our background image. So if we scroll, we see more of it. And this isn't full height. The option inside of the row was to have it full height or not full height. Using the settings for the design inside of a element, we can fine tune how much of the image we see or how tall the row is by adding padding top and bottom. And that's really all there is to the parallax. It's really easy to add, but remember, the bigger the, the parallax image, the better. And the bigger the image, the faster you can have the scroll rate on the parallax. And if you're happy with what you have, remember to click on save draft or publish to publish it because all the changes you've done here don't actually stay. You're just changing inside of the browser's memory. They're not actually saved anywhere until you click save draft or publish. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off for hosting deal in the description down below and possibly in the card that popped up if I had any remaining cards. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.